Mr. Squeaks is missing. Can a grumpy parrot, a suspicious cat, and a playful pup work together to solve the case? Join the Great Pet Detective Agency and learn how teamwork and critical thinking crack the case of the missing toy. So, let's embark on our narrative journey. A frantic meow echoed through the open window, shattering the afternoon peace in Miss Daisy's meticulously clean living room. Penelope, a regal Persian cat, with eyes the color of emeralds, paced in a tight circle, tail swishing like a furry metronome. Calm down, Penelope, croaked Bartholomew, a wise old parrot, perched on his usual stand. What's got your fur in a twist? It's Mr. Squeaks, yelled Penelope, her voice strained. He's gone, vanished without a trace. Mr. Squeaks, a well-loved, and slightly worse for her plush mouse, was the prized possession of Max, the resident golden retriever puppy. Max, a ball of boundless energy, with a penchant for chewing, was currently sprawled on the rug, whimpering softly. Bartholomew's wrinkled face creased in concern. Max's mopey state was a downer for the whole household. Don't worry, Penelope, he reassured her. We'll find Mr. Squeaks. Consider this the official case of the missing mouse. Thus began the first investigation of the fledgling great pet detective agency, a brainchild of Bartholomew, the self-proclaimed detective extraordinaire. Penelope, with her sharp eyes and keen sense of smell, would be the agency's investigator. Max, despite his lack of focus, possessed an enthusiasm that could move mountains. Their first order of business was an interrogation. They gathered the usual suspects, Mittens, the mischievous tabby cat, known for her love of fluffy toys, and Luna, the grumpy old bulldog, who wouldn't hurt a fly, or a mouse, for that matter. Mittens, squawked Bartholomew, his voice raspy but firm, did you see Mr. Squeaks anywhere? Mittens, batting her eyelashes innocently, replied in a sugary sweet voice, why, Mr. Bartholomew, Whatever could you mean? I wouldn't touch a mouse, not even a toy one. Luna, grumbling under her breath, mumbled, too much fuss over a squeaky toy. There are real mice out there, you know? Bartholomew, not buying it from mittens, decided to change tack. He turned to Penelope. Any leads from your sniff around, detective? Penelope, nose twitching, sniffed the air excitedly. There's a faint scent of grass, she declared. And strawberries? Following Penelope's nose, they ventured outside. The faint scent of strawberries led them to little Lily's sandbox. There, nestled amidst the colorful plastic toys, lay Mr. Squeaks, a victim of misplaced playtime. Lily, a sweet little girl with a gap-toothed grin, emerged from behind the bushes, holding a half-eaten strawberry. Seeing Mr. Squeaks, her face fell. Oops, she mumbled, picking up the toy. Max, his tail wagging furiously, bounded over and snatched Mr. Squeaks in his gentle mouth. Relief washed over Penelope as Max, with a happy whine, dropped the toy at Lily's feet. Lily, apologetic, offered Max a piece of her strawberry. Max, tail wagging even faster, happily accepted it. The case of the missing mouse was solved, not through interrogation or deduction, but through teamwork and a shared love for treats. The great pet detective agency, despite its unconventional methods, had cracked the case. News of their success spread like wildfire through the neighborhood. Soon, other pets were lining up at Ms. Daisy's window, seeking the agency's help with their own puzzling problems. The great pet detective agency, it seemed, 
was here to stay. Congratulations on completing The Great Pet Detectives. Your dedication to learning English is truly commendable. Let's revisit the keywords and phrases from our story to ensure they stick. A quick refresher to boost your English prowess. Number one, frantic, done in a hurried and chaotic manner due to panic. Number two, meticulously, in a manner that shows great attention to detail, very thoroughly. Number three, regal, resembling, or suitable for a king or queen, majestic. Number four, swishing, moving with a hissing or rushing sound. Number five, furry metronome, descriptive phrase, likening rhythmic movement to a metronome, typically used for keeping musical time. Number six, croaked, spoke with a rough, harsh voice. Number seven, wise, having or showing experience, knowledge, and good judgment. Number eight, twist, infer in a twist, a colloquial expression meaning to become overly upset or distressed. Number nine, yowled, made a loud wailing cry. Number ten, strained, showing signs of pressure or tension. Number eleven, vanished without a trace, disappeared completely and without leaving any signs. Number twelve, worse, four, wear, showing signs of wear and damage. Number thirteen, prized possession, a belonging that is greatly valued by its owner. Number fourteen, boundless, unlimited, immense. Number 15, penchant, a strong or habitual liking for something or tendency to do something. Number 16, whimpering, making low, feeble sounds indicative of fear, pain, or discontent. Number 17, creased, formed lines or wrinkles. Number 18, mopey, sullenly unhappy or dejected. Number 19, reassured, give comfort or confidence to someone. Number 20, fledgling, someone or something that is immature, inexperienced, or underdeveloped. Number 21, brainchild, an idea or invention considered to be a particular person's creation. Number 22, self, proclaimed, described as or proclaimed to be such by oneself, without endorsement by others. Number 23, extraordinaire, used to denote an outstanding or remarkable feature. Number 24, interrogation, a formal or systematic questioning. Number 25, usual suspects, the people who are usually suspected in similar situations, often used humorously. Number 26, mischievous, showing a fondness for causing trouble in a playful way. Number 27, grumbling, complaining in a low and indistinct tone. Number 28, mumbled, spoke in a low, indistinct manner, almost to an unintelligible extent. Number 29, fuss, a display of unnecessary or excessive excitement, activity, or interest. Number 30, buying it, believing or accepting something, often used in negative contexts. Number 31, change tack, to adopt a different method or approach. Number 32, sniff, around, informal term for using the sense of smell to find something or investigate. Number 33, faint scent, a very slight, barely detectable smell. Number 34, declared, announced formally or with authority. Number 35, nestled, settled or lying comfortably within something. Number 36, misplaced playtime, time spent playing that has unintended or undesirable consequences. Number 37, gap, toothed grin, a broad smile showing a gap between the teeth. Number 38, emerged, came out into view. Number 39, apologetic, showing or feeling regret for wrongdoing. Number 40, wagging furiously, moving back and forth rapidly. Here refers to a dog's tail. Number 41, bounded, moved by leaping. Number 42, snatched, quickly seized something in a rude or eager way. Number 43, relief washed over, a sudden feeling of comfort or relaxation following worry. Number 44, happily accepted, received or agreed to something with joy. Number 45, deduction, the inference of particular instances by reference to a general law or principle. Number 46, unconventional methods, techniques that are not based on traditional ways of doing things. Number 47, cracked a case, successfully solved a mystery or problem. Number 48, spread like wildfire, to disseminate or become known very quickly and widely. Number 49, lining up, forming a line in order to wait for something. Number 50, puzzling, causing confusion or perplexity, difficult to understand. 
If you learned some new words or laughed along the way, smash that like button. And for more stories that will help you rock your English skills, don't forget to subscribe. Check out the video on screen for more fun ways to learn English. See you next time.